This is our presentation on Duke Energy uh, from the XLU utility sector. Uh, I'm Garrett, and this is Alex and Reeves. Our executive summary for Duke is a hold based on those following criteria right there. Um, as of today, it was at $100.67, and we have a market snapshot over here on the right. About Duke Energy, um, it was originally founded in 1900 by um, financing from Dr. Walker Wiley. Um, and James B. Duke invested in the company in 1905, um, and it was originally placed in India Hook, South Carolina. And after meetings and mergers, it was changed to Duke Energy in 1924 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it's from the XLU utility sector, um, and it provides power through coal, oil, and natural gas. Um, and main competitors include Nextair Energy, Southern Company, and Dominion Energy. Uh, this is their ESG scores. Um, the, bot the top one is from Yahoo and the bottom one is from Sustainalytics, uh, both very similar scores. Um, their biggest hit was on their governance risk score. But last year, they announced a 70% carbon emissions reduction in the Carolinas. Um, and on March 25th of this year, they announced a $300,000 three-year program to provide internships for minorities. And they awarded $653,000 in grants for education in Florida. This is their board of directors. I mean, the board of directors focuses on um, different things like their governance committee, their compensation and people committee, um, audit committee, regulatory policy, and finance and risk. Um, this is their proxy issues from 2020. Um, the big one that we wanted to note was proposal number six, um, their shareholder proposal regarding and providing semi-annual report based on Duke's uh, political contributions and expenditures um, that was voted against by their board. Um, their consistency with the Christian faith, that statement uh, right there at the top comes from directly from their website, from the BRII, um, according to Anderson University's policies with abortion, alcohol, gambling, pornography, and tobacco, they received a zero in all of those categories. This is their SWOT analysis. The big things we want to point out that their strengths are 7 million customers served. Um, in their weaknesses, they have a highly concentrated area of service. I believe they're only in four states. Um, opportunities include demand, increasing demand in the U.S. and international expansion. And their biggest threat is U.S. environmental laws. Uh, Porter's Five Forces, um, big things from each one include um, high barriers to entry when it comes to th the threat of new entrants. It's very weak. The threat or the bargaining power of buyers is weak because everyone needs power and it's on a per unit basis. Um, the bargaining power of suppliers is moderate because the value of getting power, of generating power to retailing the power is volatile. The threat of substitution is strong, um, even though um, the threat of entrance is weak. The substitute is very strong because it's the same product overall, um, all around. And the rivalry among existing firms is also strong because um, even though their collaboration will make their um, current market share better, um, all companies are targeting one market segment. So this is the economic model. This comes straight from their website. It starts with up top major resources, which is like capital and employees, which leads into generation, which Duke strong, of Duke strong mix of diverse energy, and then how they transmit that from the plants to the customers and how that transmission works is the distribution on how they get that energy there. Uh, and then on the right side, we got mitigating impacts which they work hard to have low negative environmental impacts and then creating value, uh, the impact they have on the economy, lives and investments. This is the correlation matrix. They have a low beta of 0.2, uh, meaning that they're more low risk, which the entire utility sector is. The annualized average return is lower to the peer two and peer three R squared is 0 0.05, which is very low, which means they do not have much effect on the market as a whole. So here's their sales forecast. The self, as you can see, the sales increase uh, pretty steadily and consistently, except this past year because of COVID, there was a decrease. The regression forecast gives it a price of 26,592. And we took an average of those three figures, the AA forecast, GA forecast, and regression forecast to come up with our forecast right here, $25,738, which is a 7.83% growth from this upcoming year. Uh, as you can see, cost of goods sold is 
we're assuming it'll be about 50%, which it usually is, but that has been on the decrease each and every year. And we anticipate their earnings per share will bounce back. It's back up to $3.94 due to uh, COVID being away. Here's the common size analysis. Um, like I said, when you see it beside Next Era Energy, you can see how Duke Energy's cost of goods sold is a lot higher than Next Era Energy, but it is slowly decreasing. They also don't have as good of gross margins as Next Era Energy because of that. Their net income is not as good as Next Era Energy. Uh, here's the balance sheet. Uh, the big things to take away here are intangibles is a lot higher than Next Era Energy, but both companies have a high long-term debt which can raise some issues potentially. Here's the ratios. Obviously, we want to look at the current ratio. Uh, their current ratio is pretty low, and it is uh, right there with Next Era Energy. Uh, it is low, which means it struggles to cover its liabilities. And also, its quick ratio is pretty low, meaning that it, its assets struggle to cover liabilities and inventory. They have a good debt to equity ratio. Uh, and then both companies have similar financial leverage as a whole. Um, and they have a low PE ratio in general there, but with COVID, obviously it spiked to 33. And then their price to sales ratio is right, right above the average. So I'm gonna talk about the valuation. Um, revenue has grown over the past 10 years, but really most of its growth was from 2011 to 2013. And then from 2013 or from 2014 on, it's been kind of stagnant. Uh, so av average growth rate is around 6.4% per year. Um, and we've seen dividends also um, go up by almost a dollar over the course of that span. Um, so for the constant growth uh, for free cash flow, um, we have negative free cash flow. And according to this, the price of the stock is $88 for the first one. And then we have it at $71 for the, uh, for the second one. So that would have it um, under or overvalued as of right now. And for the multiple model, uh, one thing that I want to highlight is that there is negative free cash flow. And that's been the case for the past um, several years from 2016 on. That was hard to uh, guess the valuation for the price per free cash flow, but earnings per share in 2015 was around four dollars, and it has decreased to now one dollar and seventy two cents. And in 2015, sales per share was thirty four dollars, and now it's thirty one dollars. So not a lot of growth between those, but a little bit has to do with how much shares outstanding that they they have issued um, over the last couple of years because that that's increased. So uh, the valuation for um, PNS or price to earnings has it at one thirteen and sixty one dollars, and we're not going to base it on the free cash flow uh, because we don't have um, data since there's a lot of uh, negative free cash flow. And so comparing that with another company, um, they have a lot more cash than Duke Power does, which is concerning um, since Duke or Duke Energy, um, which is concerning. That means that there is not a lot of growth for Duke compared to other companies like this. Um, and you can see that as this company is undervalued compared to their multiple models. So an investment risk that we have for the regulatory, the government policies on clean energy can affect Duke Energy tremendously. Um, depending on the, the, the policies that they have, if they want more of an emphasis on clean energy, like the current administration does, then they will have to spend more money to meet those demands. And for consumer taste, right now, most consumers use gas and oil for their power, but more environmentally friendly options are coming out, which would cause Duke to start um, creating clean energy. For the scenario analysis, uh, with an emphasis of clean energy, Duke will try to meet the increased demands by investing in technology for wind and solar power. And this will increase expenses and decrease the amount of income that they receive short term. But long term, this could help them not have as many expenses. 
So the recommendation, uh, we would recommend to hold because right now it is overvalued, mostly because of the negative free cash flow is concerning. And they're not in a great financial position. So questions? 